Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Come right on in. My name is Angela Gibson Shaw. I'm the Outreach Specialist and your MC for today. And welcome to Connecting with Metro for DVBEs, sponsored by Metro's Contractor Development and Bonding Program. Hey, did you guys know that last year, the SBA, that's the Small Business Administration, reported that military veterans owned as many as 2.4 million businesses? That means on average, one out of every 10 businesses in the US is owned by a veteran. Congratulations. And to all the veterans on the call, thank you for your service and thank you for contributing to job creation in the US. Let's take a quick look at today's agenda. Got a great packed agenda for you today. We'll hear special greetings. We'll meet Akeisha Bearden, who will bring up Keith Compton. And he's from Metro and he's gonna tell you all about a little bit more about the program. Next, we'll hear about the Contracted Development and Bonding Program, which is designed to assist minority women and veteran owned businesses successfully bid on Metro projects. This awesome program is administered by Meriwether and Williams Insurance Services. In addition, you'll meet current program participants, as well as veteran organizations that have additional resources for your business. But before I introduce Lakeisha, why don't we do a little virtual networking? Please feel free, let's all take a moment and put your contact information in the chat box at the bottom of the screen. See right there where it says chat? Take a moment and put your contact information because you never know with all the people in the room, someone may want what you have. So while you're doing that, we also encourage questions along the program way in the chat box as well. And they're being monitored today by Meriwether and Williams Insurance Services account manager for Metro, Rick Casillas. Rick will be responsible for ensuring that you are contract ready with Metro. He is the account manager that will be a personal, that will be personally assigned to you. Rick, can you come off? mute and say hello and wave to the folks so they can see your face. Hey, good afternoon, everyone. This is Rick Casillas, account manager. I'm very, very happy to see all of you here. And as Angela was saying, if you need anything, uh, please feel free to contact me after. Thank you, Rick. And our engineer for today's production is Carlos Ray. He also serves as the program and marketing coordinator for the contractor development and bonding program. Carlos, can you come off mute, wave your hand and say hello? Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Thank you uh, for joining us today. Excellent. Okay. Carlos, do we want to take a group shot now while we're all fresh? <laughs> yes, that's a good idea. So let's, uh, I'm going to take a few of them. So just keep smiling. You might have to hold it a little bit longer than normal, but let's start on the first page. Yeah, let's get a good view here. Okay, let me count you guys in because that way you know. All right, three, two, one. All right. All right, that's one. Are oh, you guys can hold it for right now? I mean, are you gonna let it let it, loosen up your face for right now? <laughs> okay. Okay, I think we are good. Good to go. Let's actually actually Alrighty. let's take let's take one more just to be on okay. the safe side. All right, three, two, one. Okay, hold it, hold it. There we go. Thank you. Thank you, Carlos. All right, getting back to the agenda. Our first speaker is Lakeisha Bearden. And she's project development manager at Meriwether and Williams Insurance Services. Now, Lakeisha brings over 15 years of experience in the construction industry and 12 years in the nonprofit sector. Prior to joining Meriwether, Lakeisha worked with Jones Lang LaSalle as a project manager, and she's also worked with Swinerton Builders, a large construction firm. Lakeisha currently sits on the board for the National Association of Minority Contractors of Southern California. And she also serves on a nonprofit pathway from Boys to Men Incorporated. Lakeisha has also served as a board member for the National Women in Construction for the past five years. Please welcome Lakeisha Bearden. 
Good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for that, Angela. I think, Carlos, we can go to the next slide. Again, thank you, Angela, and thank all of you for joining us today. Um, a special acknowledgement goes out to our veterans. Uh, thank you for your service and thank you for the um, support you, you provide to our country. Um, again, welcome to uh, Connecting with Metro for DVBE. My name is Lakeisha Jordan. I am the Program Development Manager here at Meriwether and Williams Insurance Services. We are the administrators administrators of Metro's contractor development and bonding program. We have a great program lined up for you today, but before we get started, I wanted to take a moment to um, acknowledge Metro's commitment and their investment to address uh, historical barriers that make it difficult for small and diverse contractors to bid and compete on public works projects. Um, small business champions like Keith Compton, who I will introduce in a moment. Um, he's the Director of Capacity Building and Data Integration for Metro's Diversity and Economic Development Department. I will take a moment to slow that down or read that. Um, he takes his position very seriously and also Metro's mission very seriously to ensure that there are capacity building uh, resources and support services for small and diverse contractors. Uh, Pete? Thank you, Lakeisha. And I have to say, it's a pleasure to work with such dedicated um, uh, professional service people as Lakeisha and, and everyone else, Naveed and Ingrid, you guys have just been amazing. Robert, um, it, it makes our job easier. So um, thank you very much. Um, good afternoon to everyone and welcome. Um, as Lakeisha said, my name is Keith Compton. It's a pleasure to be here and to all of our veterans. Thank you for your service. And I want you to know that Metro has a DVBE program and we want you to take advantage of that. Um, some of you may know that Metro has its own certification uh, department, but we do not certify for um, veterans. We use DGSs. Uh, veteran certification. So to participate in Metro's um, programs that have a, DB, a DBBE goal on it, uh, we will accept DGS's um, certification. Um, I, I do want to point out that um, with our Meriwether and Williams uh, program, there's ample opportunity to participate on Metro's projects. We have an excess of, of uh, $20 billion dollars to spend over the next 30 years on infrastructure projects. And I'm sure you've seen a lot of the work already going on around Los Angeles County. And we want you to be a part of that. We're gonna be uh, implementing at least, you know, 55 major projects over the next 30 years. Um, and some of these projects will have DVBE goals on them and we want you to participate. Um, I'm going to close by thanking uh, Mary Weather again for, for putting this on. Uh, thank you, Angela. And I, I do want to point out that uh, we are going to be presenting again with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers um, at an event uh, next month. So I'll make sure that that's on Mary Weather's Mary uh, um, Weather and Williams calendar so that you can um, attend that as well. So um, those of you who don't know, every second Tuesday of the month, we do have a how to do business with Metro. Um, it's free and we go over everything you need to know about how to do business with us. So please take advantage of that. Um, thank you for attending this, this very, very worthwhile program. Um, thank you, Ingrid, Naveed, Robert, everybody there. Uh, thank you again, Lakeisha. Have a good program. Thank you, Keith. And I have personally been working with Keith for the last three or four years. And I really must say that he is truly dedicated to providing resources and support services to small and diverse contractors. You heard him say $30 billion. That's 55 uh, pro major projects over the next 30 years. There is enough room for all of us to participate 
Uh, make sure if you haven't attended the How to Do Business, please make sure you do, do so. Um, it's very important to understand how to do work with the public agency in which you are seeking project opportunities after. Um, this will be an opportunity to uh, learn who those small business uh, champions and their support systems are for the, in the um, uh, DEOD department. So make sure you are attending those. Take a look at some of the information that we provide. If you're not already enrolled in our program, um, we can definitely uh, speak with, uh, send a, a, a chat to Rick about um, enrolling in our program services so that we can provide you with additional details about the resources that we provide. Um, with that being said, I wanna go ahead and also introduce my colleague, Robert Lawry. Uh, Robert is our field support our project manager. He joined us in 2018. Uh, Robert brings nearly 30 years of construction experience and has been a great asset to our team. Uh, Robert's role is designed to maximize our opportunities for small, minority, and disadvantaged businesses and actively prevent defaults from projects by identifying potential technical areas of concern. Robert supports participating contractors with general and specific technical construction support and project management and assists the program and the contractors in areas such as overall project assessment, critical path assessment, planning, and risk identification and management. You'll hear from, from Robert a little later in the presentation. So let's go ahead and get started. So I'll tell you a little bit about Meriwether and Williams Insurance Services. Meriwether is a commercial property and casualty risk management consulting firm. We've been in business for over, for just about over 24 years now, just shy of uh, 25 next year in April to be exact. Uh, and we are headquartered in San Francisco. We have offices in Oakland as well as Los Angeles. But what we're probably best known for is our capacity building, technical assistance and bonding support, and now uh, financial support services that we offer to small minority and disadvantaged and the um, uh, disabled veteran and veteran uh, contractors. Next slide. So why is capacity program such um, an important uh, part to uh, public agencies, specifically agencies like Metro? Because they are specifically designed to reduce the barriers of bonding capacity enabling greater and successful participation of small, local, minority, women, and disabled veteran-owned businesses and public contract opportunities. We have what we coined as our four pillars of contractor development. That's assessment, bonding assistance and technical support, education training and contractor support, and our prime partner program. These um, pillars are really designed to again, support, enhance a contractor's ability to remove barriers and to bid and compete and win a public works construction contract. Next slide. Okay, okay. So what is bonding and why is it an important mechanism for uh, public contracting? Well, as you can see, bonding is mandated by law. I was put in place specifically to guarantee um, as an insurance for a con contractor to successfully, successfully complete a contract. It's also uh, put in place to really uh, support taxpayers' dollars. Uh, as you know, public works contracts, these projects are funded uh, by taxpayers in, in an order to ensure that these projects are completed successfully and that uh, bid the, the subcontractors, um, suppliers are paid on time, paid in full. These bonds are put in place to support that. Bonding is a three-party agreement between either with the surety, 
the owner, which could be, uh, which is the obligee, which could be the actual agency itself, or it could be the prime and the principal. So it's a three-party agreement. It really is put in place to protect the obligee, which in this case, we will talk about it being the owner, which would be the metro. So it's a three-party agreement to protect the owner. It's not designed to protect the contractor. It's there to ensure that the project is completed successfully and contractors, subs, or the suppliers are paid on time. It cannot be purchased. Uh, you must qualify for it. So this is one of the reasons why it's a, a hurdle for most contractors. Um, just like access to capital, you have to qualify for the loan, the line of credit. The same goes for a bonding. You have to qualify. They're going to look at your credit, your character, and your capacity as a business to ensure what size of projects you're able to actually bid on. Um, without that, uh, for projects, specifically uh, projects over uh, $100,000, if you're bidding directly to a public agency, nine times out of 10, you are required to bond. Unlike insurance, no losses are expected. So this is why you're required to indemnify yourself. Um, you have to complete that because the agency or the surety wants to ensure that they're gonna get their money back. No losses are expected. So again, why is bonding important to you as a small business? It's a requirement by law, specifically for projects over uh, $100,000. And it's important because um, it ensures that the owner, that you can actually um, uh, complete the project to whatever size and magnitude that particular project may be. It also ensures, again, that your subcontractors and your suppliers and your vendors are paid in full. Uh, it also can act like uh, a pre-qualification uh, pre pre mechanism for um, prime contractors. This really is kind of like your like a, a calling card or per se. You can use this to show that you have been vetted to a degree of verifying your credit, um, verifying your capacity, your experience uh, performing that particular um, scope of work. So uh, contractor um, bonding security, surety bonds are very important for contractors. And it's a, a major impediment. If you are not able to secure this, you're more than likely not going to be able to to buy a bid on public works projects. Next slide. So some of the program services that we offer for the, broad, the Metro's contractor development and bonding program, the services include obtaining or increasing your bonding capacity. So if you're a small business and you currently don't have a bond, or if you're looking to increase your bonding capacity, we are definitely a resource to you. We have been working with uh, our surety partners and our surety brokers for the past 24 years now. We have a great relationship with them. Um, a lot of, you'll find that a lot of surety brokers um, and surety uh, companies don't really uh, have an appetite for small and diverse businesses, but the brokers and sureties that we work with, they understand uh, the hurdles that small businesses go through, understand the type of resources and the contracting capacity support that we provide to our contractors. So we can, in fact, help you um, identify a, a broker if you don't already have one who's willing to really work with you. Uh, our contractor development, capacity building, and technical assistance, that's one of the things that we do. I think the next slides talk about our assessments. Uh, we have account managers that we assign to each of our uh, con enrolled contractors who will sit down with you and take an assessment, uh, understand your current capacity, and design a work plan that's specifically tailored to your needs as a business. Uh, we don't give a blanket statement or uh, outline. We specifically design a work plan that's going to help you 
grow your business and your capacity. Uh, we also provide weekly bid alerts uh, through our, uh, what we call our, uh, 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 we changed the name of it, it's Contractor Weekly. So our Contractor Weekly is sent out on Wednesday at 2 p.m. And this is designed to really help you understand not having to navigate from this portal to this portal, but having a centralized location that will allow you to understand what's going on as far as outreach opportunities, what's going on in the contracting world as far as bid opportunities, um, how to networking events, these it's really tailored to help you as a small business who doesn't really have the capacity to um, uh, do a lot of the back office after hours. Um, your account manager is there to also provide you with this information as well. They're like your dedicated business development manager. We have our collateral support uh, that is also helped uh, there to help you if you are bidding on a metro project. Um, we will be able to provide you with or assist you with um, the bonding issue and or uh, collateral support. We provide uh, collateral support for 250,000 as a maximum or 40% of the contract value, not to exceed $250,000. We also provide um, CPA prepared financial state statements, a subsidy for that to support you as a small business you will have, you are required to pay the first $500 up front, and then we can support you at uh, $2,300. But keep in mind that this is a one-time uh, opportunity. So you don't want to kind of do that um, if you don't really need that. Some projects don't require a CPA uh, prepared financial statements. So this is something that you will wanna um, be very uh, uh, mindful of when taking advantage of this particular resource. Next slide. I talked a little bit about the bid alerts already as well. So I mentioned that we, uh, I mentioned that our account managers work with each individual contractor to develop, to get in a better understanding of their capacity. We also use that assessment to then build a work plan for you so that you know how to navigate through the ins and outs of public uh, works contracts. A customer, a contractor profile is used uh, similar to a capability statement. Um, it is used as a marketing tool. Uh, we, we use this uh, to market to our prime partners that we uh, come in uh, contact with during our, our um, training academies, during our, our monthly workshops. It really is a necessary tool to have in place to um, advertise your business in a, a professional manner. I know a, a lot of contractors or primes are looking for your capability statement. And this is just a twist on that. We provide um, pictures. We also identify all the list of the certifications you may have, as well as your NICS codes. It really is an opportunity to showcase your, um, your work. Uh, your account manager can help you out with this. We also help with certification, um, bid document review, which is something that Robert will go over with you in more detail, our contract monitoring, our um, monthly workshop and coaching. That is something that we also um, provide uh, that could be via um, Robert's assistance or our account managers to provide that coaching as well. So our construction training academy, this is a, a two-part and we uh, host it for both um, our spring and well, our fall, I guess, and then our summer uh, training. We have a bidding and estimating training that uh, is strictly with Metro and Metro, um, we have produced a mock bid. This is, I think, one of the, the advantages of really taking part on these types of trainings is because we really do understand um, and sit down with you and provide you with a real life scenario of how a bid from start to finish will work if you're bidding on a project with Metro. You're assigned into teams, you work with those teams to then um, utilize their advantage, their, their pros and their advantages as far as your team to help you 
with any, you know, things that you may not be strong in. You have other teammates to kind of help you. It gives you the opportunity to network with your peers. It gives you the opportunity to really network with the primes, our prime partners, our um, lecturers, and a lot of these trainings. So it really is advantageous to take advantage of these trainings, specifically when you want to learn how to do business with Metro, the bidding and estimating is a great opportunity to learn that. Um, the contract award and management. So again, it's a two part. So first is bidding and estimating how to actually bid and get awarded. And once you're awarded that project, we help you with the proper um, procedures and steps on how to do pro uh, construction management, project management, managing that project from start to finish. So there really are tricks of the trade, best practices of how best to run your project. And then our prime partnership program, which again um, is, is critical to what we do because we really work with our primes to understand what it is that they're looking for. They share with our program what they're looking for in terms of how to put your best foot forward as far as a small business. Next, next slide. So quickly, just wanted to show how um, our collateral uh, works. So I mentioned to you that Metro provides collateral support for 40% of the contract value or $250,000, not to exceed that 250. And how that works is, say for example, you as a contractor has uh, a bonding capacity of 500,000. You're looking to bid on a project that's $1 million. So obviously, you know, you're not able to move forward because you don't have the capacity to do so. Our program is the solution to that uh, dilemma. We, Metro provides collateral support for up to $250,000, which allows you as a contractor to then bid on that $1 million project. Again, we are working with brokers and sureties who want to see you succeed, who want to do business with small businesses. So they understand the type of support that we as um, Metro program provides to small businesses as far as the assessments and the work plans and the contract monitoring that we do and even the, um, the financial support that we offer. Our brokers and sureties understand the level of support that we offer our contractors, so they are more inclined to allow um, uh, the, the increase in the bonding capacity for this particular project. Next slide. So these are just some examples of what um, $250,000 uh, $250, equates to. So for this first example, you'll see uh, 250,000 actually equates to 22% uh, of the contract value. Whereas the second example, 250,000 equates to 5% of the contract value. So I, we wanna make sure you see um, the, the difference in that. You'll also see for the, um, that 5%, it was actually a $6 million contract that the contractor was bidding on. So it, it's a, the, the $250,000 goes a long way. Next slide. So now I'm turning it over to my colleague, Robert Lowry, our field support uh, project manager, who will talk about these uh, field support services that we provide contractors when bidding or awarded a contract opportunity. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome uh, to this opportunity here. So I'm going to spend a few minutes to talk about our field support services. So Carlos, uh, one of our uh, key things that we do is called bid document review. And this is, you know, it's really great that I get a chance to attend the pre-bid or maybe the account manager and give some inside information about it. And then also we'll review the contract documents, the plans, and you know, sit down with you and just go through that to identify, to, with identifying any risk that's with the project. 
because that's the whole thing about doing your homework up front, know what the risks are so you can address them and also uh, qualify those in your bid. And also we assist with identifying the required bid documents. And as you know, with uh, Metro, there's uh, quite a bit of forms that needs to be filled out. So we will sit down and go through these forms with you to make sure that they're filled out correctly because Metro is always on uh, the most responsive bid or not low bid. So fill out these forms are, are very critical. But however, I do want to point out that we do not look at your numbers. You know, I might suggest, hey, did you include, you know, cleanup in your general contract? So I'll give you some pointers to go and look at. But we do not want to assist you with your numbers because that is solely your numbers. Um, and then once you have completed everything, you know, we'll do another final bid document review to make sure that, you know, you, you had things notarized, signatures, and all that. That way you're submitting a complete responsive bid. Hopefully that you will be a successful bidder on that. And then after the bid period is done, we also can offer a post bid debrief. So if you were not a successful bidder, you know, we'll sit down and go through your documents compared to the numbers that of the your competitors and see where you are and you know, maybe identify some of your areas the way you can improve on your numbers as well. So that is the critical thing about this bid document. Um, you know, we like for to start like as soon as you can go to the pre-bid because waiting until two days before the bid is due, it's kind of hard. It's a little stressful for you and I. So give me a, giving us enough time to go through this thoroughly, you know, and it, it's a great tool for you. Uh, next slide, please. So once you have been awarded the project contract, we then go into what's called contract support. And so this is where I really get involved with you and your team and also with the owner, or it could be the prime, or it could be Metro, it depends on who is your hiring agency. And we hold it what's called a kickoff, project kickoff, where we get both sides of the teams together, myself, and because of this funds control, we would like for them to attend the meeting as well. And we go through the process. We talk about the project so everybody has an understanding and we allow the funds control administrations to talk about their process as well. Because we know that with the collateral support and the bonding, that's why we have uh, a third party. So that way the bills get paid, it's guaranteed. Um, so also with that kickoff, we have a job startup checklist that I can work with you and make sure you have identified every piece of the project so before you even get into the field because doing your homework in advance will make the job go a lot easier once you get into the field. Uh, the next thing is there are monthly reports that we uh, ask to be submitted to me for review. Uh, the contract status reports that is going to be the prime or the agency the principal status is going to be you if you're the subcontractor. However, if you are the prime, then you'll be filling out the contract status report as well. So that report has a number of reasons. Uh, it's also, it's a good measurement to see where you're progressing with the project from month to month. It also identifies open change orders, your billing, uh, some critical things that you know I like to compare with the agency or the prime and the sub and also with the payments get all three reports and analyze to see if everybody's you know reporting the same thing and this also allows for me to look at your billing uh, do monthly check-ins and construction schedule to make sure that you're still on schedule uh, that's the critical thing because if you're on that critical path, you want to make sure that you're progressing, you know, as that schedule allows. Uh, another thing that we provide is site visits. And with the site visit, I will come out to the site and walk around, look, talk to your team, talk to everyone, and, you know, do my own like little audits on safety, uh, you know, for being, you know, project manager for a number of years. You know, I've learned to identify some of these risks with safety. Um, so that's the critical thing is we don't want anybody to get hurt. 
So I you know, kind of assess that as I go through that. And then anything that we talk about, uh, you know, it goes into the site visit report and then I will give you a copy of it and there's some action items that might be given to myself or yourself to, to follow up with to make sure that you complete in this. And, you know, the critical thing is the billing and payments. You, you know, I want to make sure that your pay app is completed correctly. Um, one thing I like to tell you to do is to, when you have this kickoff meeting, is to sit down with the hiring agency or the prime and ask for an example of their billing. So you can see exactly what they're looking for. And that cuts down on the number of times it's getting kicked back to you. So billing, like I said, is, is critical with projects. Um, another thing that we go through is change order. And you know, hey, if you don't have a change order log or process, I can assist you with putting one into place that's very detailed. And this is, is critical because this way you know your forecast for open change orders, uh, what's been approved, and there's a number of steps with this. And that way, when you're having your uh, meetings with the owners, you can go in and say, you know, I have X amount of change orders for $20,000 still open, and let's try to reconcile. And key thing with change orders, you want to reconcile monthly on the jobs because you want to be able to build with that, build those, and not have those lingering on after the project is over. Uh, so that is a critical thing that I spend a lot of time with even teaching some classes on change order management uh, because that is successful to completing the job. Also, we get to do the closeout because there's a lot of requirements that needs to happen. So I can assist you with the closeout and then we can uh, make sure once the closeout is done, you get your notes of completion. Then we start with your bond, getting that release and the collateral which is like a 90 day tail period once that NOC is submitted. So getting that bond released is critical. So that way you can use that for other jobs coming forward. So as you see, there's, there's a lot of support that you get with this program. And like I said, this is free to you because Metro uh, supplements uh, the cost of this. So being enrolled into the program, you get a lot of benefits from this, you know, the only thing is going to be time, which is going to help you build your capacity. Uh, next slide. So, you know, for more information on the program, you, here's our contact information, our website and email. So, you know, make sure that you write this down and I'm sure that you will be able to get this information at the end. And, you know, I'm looking forward to working with each and every one of you. Uh, in our workshops, our academies, uh, you name it, we're here to support you. So thank you. Great. Thank you, Robert and Lakeisha. Uh, um, talk Angela, about. If I yes. may, uh, you know, one thing that I don't think we mentioned was that our program services are free. Uh, the services that uh, Metro provides to um, the uh, contractors free, free of charge. So just want to just reiterate that, um, free, free, free. So really take advantage of, of what, we're, what we're offering here. So it's a lot, um, uh, there's a lot of project opportunities coming down the pipeline. So really take advantage of, of the program services. Also, I wanted to make sure that I indicated that the uh, collateral support that Metro offers to its contractors is specifically for Metro projects only. So just wanted to um, reiterate that if I didn't make that clear, wanna make sure that is clear. I saw a note in the chat, but just wanted to make sure that the projects are, that the collateral support um, that Metro offers is for Metro projects only. All right, very good. How much does this cost, gang? It's free. All right. Uh, thank you again for the uh, information. Talk about personalized service. This is a great program that grooms veteran contractors for success. I think I know you guys are ready to sign up because they're going to groom you and walk you through the front door. And so uh, this is a, I just don't even know what the value of all this could be. Have you guys put a dollar amount on this? Of how much 
benefits these are to the folks. Uh, thank you again. Hey, look, I was looking in the chat, man. There's some great you know, folks here with some great companies. I see underground utilities, environmental corporations. Wait, I see Keith Compton's phone number. Oh my goodness. Okay, y'all got to take a look at the, the the, in, in the chat box and then people are leaving their phone numbers. You just don't see that nowadays. All kinds of stuff. Signs, prime contractors, some great, a great, great, some great resources. We'll make sure that we get everybody's contact information of all the participants today on how to get in touch with them. I don't know, Carlos, are we able to send this information that was in the chat box? Um, yes. Yeah, so I guess by putting your chat, uh, your information in the chat box, you've given us consent to share it. And so once people get the recording, they will see that in the chat box. So. Okay, perfect. So Great. Thank you. Now that you've heard about the contractor development and bonding program, let's meet one of the program's participants, Mr. Ron Escobar. Let me tell you a little something about Ron. Ron joined the U.S. Marines at 19, and he's been in business for more than 17 years first as a real estate broker, then a developer, and lastly, as a general contractor. And he's leading the efforts of Escobar Construction Team that provides construction management services in the public sector. He is a single father of two amazing ROTC cadet sons and his bulldog, Ahsoka. He and his sons reside in Redondo Beach, and he enjoys practicing yoga, running, and maintaining an active lifestyle. Ryan, could you take about five minutes and share the program benefits with their attendees today? Thanks. Unmute Ron and where did Ron go? Okay, I have to unmute. Can you hear me wow. now? Yes. Okay, I'm going to kind of like try to fly by it. First of all, uh, just to remind you guys that we're in the military. When I say ears, you say open, sir. Do you hear what I said? When I say ear, you say open, sir. <laughs> okay, no, I'm now being serious. I got your attention. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to fly through these slides. And, and I think the, the biggest thing I want to share is ownership. You have to take ownership for your success. Uh, LA Metro is putting together a lot of resources. Uh, Meriwether and Williams puts amazing resources. They're easy to get a hold of. Uh, when was the last time somebody was willing to put up $250,000 to back up your project, you know, and that turns into like a million dollars of bonding. So ownership, 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 they can force feed you success. You got to uh, take it from it. So I'm just going to fly through this slides and um, make sure that we get through it. The mission statement for our company is something we believe in to continually create value for our clients, business partners, employees, and agents through straightforward communication and the consistent delivery of experiences and results. That means we mean what we say and we say what we mean. We create value for everyone. We're straightforward and we have a consistent focus and excellence, right? And we mean, when we say creating value for everyone, we mean you know people in Metro, we mean subcontractors, we mean people that help us like Mayweather and Williams, we mean everybody. We're constantly thinking, how can we be add value to everybody? So next slide, please. What we do, we're a small prime contractor that focuses in construction management. Um, I like to say my rap name is Little Prime. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it, sometimes it is difficult as a prime contractor to find uh, opportunities to to be a prime contractor that are in the low scope of the bonding uh, scale. But we have been doing, uh, we have had the opportunity to do that. We have all these certifications that are here and uh, we're looking to participate and to help other uh, small business entities, other disabled veteran owned businesses, veteran owned businesses, uh, women owned businesses. We work primarily for the federal government and uh, City of LA and LA Metro. Uh, go to the next slide, please. We cherish help. That means we value it. We, we accept it. We want it. We seek it. Uh, we got very close to obtaining a $250,000 funding assistance. We bid on a, on a project for LA Metro on a cafeteria. It was $650,000. 
And uh, ultimately at the end, the, the, the project got canceled, but we were in line. We had every, all the paperwork filled out and we were ready to go. It's just with COVID, it didn't work out, but you know, we're looking forward to the next one. We also uh, get subcontractor referrals consistently. We're looking for subcontractors. We got the technical guidance that uh, we were talking about with Robert and uh, we we got the CPA subsidy. Uh, we're pursuing project financing. It's a very good project uh, plan that they're administering right now that hopefully LA Metro will uh, come up with as well. Uh, they give you finance for your project regardless of how much money you made last year. That is something you don't see very often. Um, and we're, we're very excited and grateful for it. And we want more and more and more. Next slide, please. Uh, some of the projects we're working on, we're in Bakersfield National Cemetery. It's a $1.4 million project we got. Uh, we recently got a LA Historic Park, 3.2 million was the bid. It actually is at 2.9. And I got alerted to this project through the email that I get on Wednesdays. They say, you may want to bid on this project. And I say, hell yeah, let me look into it. And here's the funny part. I say, I'd rather be lucky than good. We were actually the second lowest bidder. And as it turned out, the first bidder was five minutes late on their bid, bid submission, and they gave it to us. So now we're sitting on, a, on our largest project, $2.9 million. Um, there is the LA cafeteria. We worked with the VA. We worked in Hawaii uh, doing a retaining wall for the National Cemetery. We have a multi-year contract with the National Cemetery Administration. And we also have a um, multi-year contract with the Fish and Wildlife. So we're all over the Western part, part of the United States and in Hawaii. Uh, next slide, please. What we're looking for in subcontractors is what I think we're looking for in ourselves to be responsive, to be organized, to have the admin side of the house as good as your trade side of the house. That's important. You, you can be an amazing electrician, but if you can't fill up an insurance form, you're not gonna get very far on it, right? So the paperwork in public sector is incredibly important. Uh, woo, I wasn't going that fast. <laughs> you, we understand that you're challenged, right? I'm challenged, uh, you know, it, don't be afraid to ask for help. Don't be afraid to reach out. If you think the insurance is too expensive and you wouldn't want to do the job, maybe the prime contractor will subsidize you. Maybe you'll find a subsidy somewhere else. Just ask, you know, go for it. Um, next slide, please. Uh, the pre-qualification process, we have one that, you know, everybody submits a form. You have no idea how much trouble we have getting people to fill out that form but we'll walk you through it. So next slide. I just wanted to close with saying that I personally, and as a result, my team have a passion for a diverse community and we understand and live the effects of our, unfortunately, uh, the history that our country has had with disadvantaged communities, right? So we're, we're a result of that, what happened in the past. And we love to be an active contributor uh, to rectify or to make the scales of equality a little bit more balanced and, you know, and the, the promise of our nation that all men and women are creative equal, right? And we all have right to it. So I encourage everyone here to think big and to not be shy. And I, I share with you that I started working in this program two years ago and I got my first bonding letter of $400,000 and now my bonding capability is around $5 million and have about seven active projects and from 35,000 to, you know, the, the 2.8, $2.9 million that, that we have going on. So Great. the sky's the limit, go for it. Don't be shy, ask for it, but own it. It is your responsibility, no one else's. So that's it. Excellent, thank you. I overran thank it you. by a minute. I'll do some push-ups. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I would, I would like Angela, I would like to speak on Ron's behalf. I mean, he's, he's kind of like one of our postal childs here in the program. I remember when he said two years ago, when he came into the program, they were in the academy and Ron and his team reached out to me asking for help. And I, I set up one-on-one -on -one time with, with him and work with him and now look at the success he's doing. 
So our program does work. So I just want to plug that in. Sorry, Lakeisha and Angela, but I just want to say that about Ron. No, 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 thank you. That really helps. And so you can see the benefits and how it's greatly helped uh, Escobar Construction. And so again, uh, make sure you sign up, make sure you sign up. Okay, so thanks, Ron, again. And now it's time yeah. for a little, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Lakeisha. No, I just said, thank you, Ron. I know he has to jump off. So I just wanted to thank him for his time. I wasn't going to tell everybody that I'm jumping off, but, <laughs> but I am jumping off. <laughs> Got to catch a flight to go to Idaho. <laughs> All right. So now it's time for a little audience participation, folks. So um, sit up, wake up, show up. Uh, we're going to take a poll and we need your help. So please help us by answering these three questions so that we can better meet your needs. And our engineer, Carlos, is going to walk us through these three questions here. So if you guys can take a moment and uh, answer these poll questions, that'd be greatly appreciated. I think you'll also need to scroll down to finish number three. Oh, yeah, I see. OK. So are you currently enrolled in the contractor development and bonding program? And what does your DVBE company need help with? Or just your veteran company, even if you don't have the status, even if you don't have the certification, what does your company your veteran company need help with. Look at all the opportunities that we can help you with and what type of company do you own? And so if you can just take a moment, look at that fierce photo Ron Escobar has up of him. That's fierce. So Carlos is gonna give you a few seconds. Um, yeah, we have we have quite a few people here with us this afternoon. So we'll give a, maybe 30 more seconds or so. Okay. I'll invite everybody to participate. We We're getting some good participation so far. Excellent. Let's see. I just want to add while you guys are filling out the poll that your participation and these types of surveys is greatly needed and appreciated. Um, we really do utilize the input that we receive from our construction businesses so that we can improve upon the services that we add. We don't uh, just think what we think you need. We actually go out and ask you what you need and we develop um, that type of training uh, to address whatever issue or hurdle that you're currently experiencing. So it's very important that um, you participate so we know exactly how we can be of better service. Yeah, and to your point, Lakeisha, um, we actually uh, did our first marketing um, series this year, earlier this year, because of results of polls and surveys that contractors like you guys filled out. You said, hey, we need help with marketing. Uh, we don't know where to start. You know, we don't know what, what we should be doing. So we developed a, a four-week series around contractor marketing. So um, when Lakeisha says your poll reaction, I mean, responses and survey responses matter, they actually do because um, we read them, we go through them, and we try our best to implement um, what you guys are asking for. Right. That's how we design our work. All right, Carlos, are we ready to move on? Yes, yeah, so it looks like we are. Um, we have about 72% of attendees that have participated so i think we can we can move on oh great yeah how much how are we doing on time Ooh, let me move on all righty so um next up now we're going to move over and transition to the second part of our program it's veteran resources we've invited a few organizations that will briefly share who they are and the resources that they have available for you. And they should also be putting their contact information. You should see that in the chat. And once you meet them, you can be able to find that there. So do I have David Ramil with me from Vib Network? David, if you're here, can you come off mute? I don't believe David is with us this afternoon. I don't either, right? We'll get you some information. I know that their director, uh, Rebecca, was unable to join us. And so she was going to try to find a representative to send in her place. I don't think he's here yet. Okay, moving right along. Next up is William Bill Osgood. 
Now, Bill leads a small business veteran advocacy firm, and he is a certified business and executive coach with CFR and Associates. Bill served in the United States Marine Corps prior to getting a medical discharge, and he serves in several volunteer roles, one of them being the Los Angeles chapter of the US VBA. He cha chairs an annual Turning Construction Contacts into Contracts Conference, now in its eighth year. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our good friend, William Bill Osgood. Bill, you want to unmute me? John? I'm unmuted, yes, thank you. I just put my name in the chat and contact information. So, well, I got to update that bio. because We haven't done a uh, turning contacts in the contract since, um, since the fall of 2019. So <laughs> it was going to be on its eighth, ninth year. Um, with that said, I'm the president of the Los Angeles chapter of the U.S. Veteran Business Alliance. We are uh, a large local organization that represents all veteran business owners. And we have two major agenda items um, and two or two major uh, points to our mission. Number one is to help our veteran business owners obtain and secure and maintain any level of government contracting, federal, state, um, municipal, municipal contracts and or uh, primes and agency contracts. So we attempt to be very, very active and visible in the community. And as such, I, I've been involved with um, Metro's TBAC for probably the better part of six or seven years now. I'm currently the legislative chair and the immediate past vice, vice chair of Metro's TBAC. Um, I'm also the president of the Los Angeles Unified School Districts uh, Small Business Advisory Council. So I do that in representing our veteran businesses. We have some 70 veteran businesses that, that are active members of the Los Angeles chapter and over 1,300 that are in Southern California and over 2,100 in the state of California that we represent. So our goal and our purpose in that as I said, is to not only see that your company is ready to go to the next level at whatever level you're at, whether it's to get into a bonding program, whether it's to get certified, whether it's to get VA verified, whether it's to get on a team uh, for a, a, a federal contract, get on a team for a local Metro contract, whatever it might be. And so we are, um, frequently soliciting the help of organizations uh, like LA Metro and some of its very large primes to support us in that endeavor. And we're very good at it as well. We're very regionally focused, very uh, Los Angeles metropolitan area focused and, and real good. However, our reach does expand in the, in, in the LA chapter, not, not just the US VBA, but our reach does expand all the way to San Diego and all the way up uh, into the um, Central Coast as well. So we have a fairly good footprint. The second thing that we do, and this is relatively a newer um, mission um, emphasis, and that is to help our members hire veteran uh, employees when they win a contract. So we've gotten extremely active in organizations that assist in doing that. And we have some 30 partners that uh, we reach out to when any of our members need veteran employees. And we're able to, to submit several uh, resumes and, and, and or names and, and do some outreach for them. Obviously it was much easier pre-COVID, but we've even been effective doing it during COVID. So um, it's something that's very important to us with uh, sole focus of the LA chapter. We're the only chapter that does that. Uh, and we do it as, as well as we can, can do it, given the fact that we're an all volunteer organization. Uh, we haven't had any physical meetings uh, since uh, January of 2020. However, we do have one monthly online meeting currently. I am looking to restart some kind of a physical meeting uh, here probably within the next month or two and um, get back into actually putting uh, people together that, that can pursue contracts and have opportunities to do that together. And then finally, I'd say the third thing that we do uh, that's relatively new as well, um, but it's a great idea and it's something that I've learned from my business and 
when I'm successful at doing it, I have a much better chance of being successful. And that's to get um, like-minded veteran businesses together to, to partner into teams and or joint ventures to pursue opportunities, filling the gaps of where uh, their competence, core competencies are, are strengthened by each other and therefore making it uh, far more feasible for the contracting authorities to, to agree to do business with you. So we'd love to help you in any of those. Um, again, we're, we're headquartered out of Patriotic Hall, uh, downtown Los Angeles. Uh, when we get back together right now, we're just online, but I, I uh, have put my email in the chat. I'll do it again and, um, and my cell phone number and feel free to call me if you wanna get back together and, and we can help you get uh, involved in the US VBA. We are one of three organizations uh, represented uh, today and, and all three are really good. Uh, I've worked with Novoba for several years. VIB puts on perhaps one of the best conferences that I've ever seen. Uh, I don't know that they're gonna be able to speak to it today since they're not here, but if you get a chance, that conference is coming up, I believe uh, early next month. And it's uh, really, you can just, you can just uh, Google it. It's VIB network and they're located out of San Diego, California. So, all right, well, thank you folks. Any questions, just put them in the chat and I'll be around for the rest of the day. All righty, thank you, Bill. And we are ready to get together live. So let us know I think we're all ready. Yes, and we'll be sending out information on whatever you've got for us. You want us to send out to the folks that are on the call. We can get that information to them. Thank you again. It's good to see you virtually. So our next speaker is Heather Herndon Wright. And Heather is the Director of Supply Chain Diversity for the Vistra Energy family of companies. Previously, she was President and CEO of Herndon Wright Enterprises. Heather currently serves as chair of the board of directors for the National Veteran-Owned Business Association, NAVOBA. Let's welcome Heather. Thank you so much, Angela. It's exciting to be here. Matt Pavlik, who is the actually the president of NAVOBA, unfortunately wasn't able to join. He asked me to step in for him, so I'm excited, excited to be here. Having previously, many, many years ago and several careers ago, seemed like being with the DFW Airport Board, I uh, got my MCA certification. So I appreciate the, the public sector and the, the local DOT organizations that and the DBE certifications, everything they have to go through. Um, just real quickly, give you an overview of Navoba. Our primary mission is really to work with company, with veteran-owned and service disabled veteran business enterprises to introduce you into the corporate supply chain. So to really help you expand your business opportunities beyond public sector contracting into the private sector and really facilitate that transition. And the way that we do that, if you can go to the next slide, is through a certification process. So we provide certification, advocacy, outreach recognition, and education. And our model's a little different. We're very similar, if you all are familiar with the National Minorities Player Development Council or the Women Business Enterprise National Council. We are structured pretty much the same way. We're a corporately driven organization with two thirds of our board seats held by corporations. One sixth is held by veteran businesses and then one sixth is held by partner organizations. Um, unlike those other, uh, unlike WeBank and NMSCC where they have regional affiliates and, and regional partner organizations, we partner with existing veteran organizations such as the US VBA, Bill and his organization, VIB, we're participating in that as well because there are so many good veteran organizations out there that already provide um, entrepreneurial training and other activities that we don't feel like we need to replicate that. Our primary focus is to certify that you're 51% or more owned, controlled, and operated by veterans or service-disabled veterans, and then really working with you to connect you and help you uh, be supported in connecting you with the corporate opportunities that are out there in contracting uh, bid opportunities. So you can go to the next slide. Um, we do try to base what we do on, on data. And one of the things that was very important to me that I know I've used back internally with my executives, that particularly that fourth bullet, veteran-owned businesses are 30% more likely to hire veterans than a non-veteran-owned company. We assume that with minority businesses. We assume that with women-owned businesses, LGBT and disabled. We've actually got the data to prove it with the, with the veteran-owned businesses that you all do tend to hire other veterans. And you have that, that sense of camaraderie, the commitment to a mission, the commitment to achieving a goal. 
So it, it just, it's wonderful to do business with veteran-owned businesses and corporate America is very interested in finding you, identifying what your capabilities are, and then trying to bring you into the corporate contracting space in a way that will help you grow and develop that won't overwhelm you. And sometimes that may be at a tier two level, sometimes it may be tier three, sometimes it's direct, just depending on where it makes the most sense to bring you in. So we're definitely looking for you. If you can go ahead and go to the next slide. The NAVOBA certification process, similar to what you all probably have with, the, with Metro and with the um, CPUC, is it's based on 49 CFR Part 23 and Part 26. Exact same standard. We, we provide a site visit for every certification. Obviously, right now it's, it's virtual, but 100% of our companies receive a site visit so that we can verify that what's on paper is what actually is in the operational part of the business. A um, little bit different. In fact, I think you can go to the next slide as well, kind of covers that bullet. One of the differentiators with Novoba is that we certify every other year. So your certification is good for two years. Um, we do have a trademark certified VBE and certified SD VBE. We are the lowest cost certification out there for right now, but there is a cost uh, as opposed to CV where it's free of charge. But we also turn our certification reviews around in roughly, um, I think, 17 days. So assuming once you've got your paperwork in and all that information is there and we will work with you to make sure it's a complete file, we turn it around very, very quickly. We have a series of volunteers, of corporate volunteers that do the site visits. And we have actually, it's the same company that does the paper review, document review for uh, the CVE certification. So very familiar with it, able to process it quickly. It is 100% digital. So you apply all online. We just launched with the digital certification. So you don't have to worry about mailing your very, very confidential documentation, financials and things like that. You're able to upload it all online. We do go through IDME. For those of you that may not be familiar with that, that's a third party organization that verifies directly with the Department of Defense on your VBE status or on your veteran status. And so before you're even able to start the application process online, we have you go through this. We cover that cost. You do not have to pay for that. And there are other, uh, I guess, value added activities that go along with the ID. You get discounts and other, um, I, I think, information that ID me provides too once you've been certified or once you've been registered with them. Once you get that registration, they verify that you are, in fact, a, an honorably discharged veteran then you'll be able to start the certification process with us. And I think there may be, there may be one more on here. I think this was the, um, oh, if you are CVE certified, we also do have fast tracks where we, again, because we, we share some of that certification activity. So we're able to get you through quickly. And that's one of the reasons we're able to get you certified quickly. Okay, the next slide. We're also part of the um, National Business Inclusion Consortium. So if you happen to be an ethnic minority, woman-owned, service-disabled, LGBT company, we work with the other organizations and try to collaborate again with the things that we share from a resource standpoint, as well as the certification standpoint. So we're able to, again, fast track some of those certifications. And you can see the organizations down there in case you're involved with any of those. Our model is very much collaborative. We really don't want to reinvent the wheel. We want to take what's already out there and just add to it and make it better. So um, we work very closely with these organizations. And then next slide. One of the things that we do internally is what we call Marching Forward Monday. So every Monday at, uh, I believe it be 11 p.m. or 11 a.m. your time, we have a, a series of just one hour presentations. So one week, it may be three or four corporations that are talking about how to do business with corporate America with their particular corporation. We have some where it's the veteran businesses that are giving an overview of their capabilities. So you'll see their capabilities presentations. Because one of the other things we highly encourage is that we do VBE to VBE business. You all are, are great companies that can do business together as well as doing businesses with the city, with the metro, with, with the corporate um, America as well. So this is a, a, a showcase where we're able to hopefully facilitate you all getting to know each other as well as getting to know us and then being able to provide that extra educational component. Um, next slide. One of the things we're also very proud of is we've just recently launched our sourcing tool, which gives you all a 
phenomenal marketing activity. So when you go in and you do put in all your information for certification, we make that available to source from our corporate, uh, corporate allies. And so if I want to go at Vistra, say, for instance, I want to find a company that maybe can do hazmat removal at one of our battery storage facilities up in Moss Landing, California, then I can go into that database and put in the very specific criteria. And, and we've got some other more than what's on this slide, but we do collect your bonding capability as well. So if it's a construction company and we need to know what you're able to bond, um, we, we did a battery storage facility at, at Moss Landing that um, we had $150 million bonding capacity requirement on that. So we can go in and put those things in there and pull up the suppliers that meet that criteria. So the more information you can put in there, the better we on the corporate side when we're sourcing are able to find you. And we also have a section where you can just upload your documents, any, any videos you may have, links you may have, other corporate marketing materials, separate apart from certification so that you can also market yourself to the corporate allies that are members of Novova. And the next slide. We also have a brand that is that is a trademark called the Certified Veteran Owned um, brand, which is for companies that are in the retail space. So for instance, Lowe's is one of our members. Lowe's is really looking for veteran owned companies that have a product that they could sell retail. And so we have a logo just like you may see at, at Walmart with the women owned uh, status on it. We also have the veteran owned status. So that's the logo that you're able to put on your products or services once you're certified free Novova. And the next slide, I think I'm almost at the end, trying to get it in that seven minutes. Um, this is our Veteran Business Enterprise of the Year Awards. We have these every year. Right now, they are open if you go to the Novova website and you're interested in, the, in applying for a Veteran Business Enterprise of the Year Award. We would love to have you put your information in there. And then we've got a committee, a third party committee that goes through that. And then we'll be uh, recommend, uh, uh, recognizing the veteran businesses of the year. Uh, we have a Hispanic veteran business of the year, minority veteran business of the year, a woman veteran business of the year, LGBT veteran business of the year. So several different categories, all culminating with our overall veteran business enterprise of the year. And so if you go to our website now, you'll be able to see that and, and, and fill out an application and apply for uh, recognition as that. So I. Highly encourage you to do it. And if you have any questions, I'll be happy to take those now. I don't know if we had any in the chat. I'm looking real quick. I, I um, don't see any, but if you do, feel free to ask it now. Yeah. All right. Very good. You did that. Yeah, I think that was about seven minutes. You did very good. Thank you for Lots the opportunity. To present. We appreciate being part of this group. Thanks so much. Thank you, Heather. And I'd like to give a, a big uh, shout out and thank you to all of the veteran resource representatives that presented today. And I hope that our attendees will reach out to the groups and, and get more valuable information for your business. And so moving right along, uh, let's meet another program participant, Gene Hale. Let me tell you a little bit about Gene. He's the CEO of GNC Equipment Corporation. The company's engaged in the sale and lease of construction equipment, material and supplies. He's a registered DVBE and is currently the chairman of the Greater Los Angeles African American Chamber of Commerce, as well as serving as the chair of the Gardena Police Foundation. Jean? Good afternoon, everyone. Angela, thank you very much for this great presentation. Bill, good to see you as well and all the other presenters here. So uh, everything has been said, uh, but I just have one thing that I would like to do is try to encourage uh, all the veterans to uh, sign up for this program. It, it's just tremendous. I'm a serving as a veteran as well. Uh, you know, I think it's important that you have the skills to meet the demand that's coming down the pike. And I'll share one of the things that I've been working on back in Washington, D.C. Uh, with the Department of Transportation and some senators. As you all know, uh, the, um, the MTAs, I'll just use them as an example, or the airports, uh, they don't have, uh, they have the DBE goals, but they don't have services they were veteran goals on their projects. I have been working with the senators back in Washington, D.C., and I just recently saw where the House passed the bill that will mandate the MTAs, or I'll put it differently, all recipients of DOT funds, not just the MTAs, 
will now have a DVBE goal in addition to a DBE goal. We all know that they have a goal for the, uh, the Measure M money, but on federal money, there, there's, there are no goals. But now I, it will be a goal. And there's some other things that I'm working on uh, to help the veterans as well. So I think that to meet that demand, because all the infrastructure spending that's coming down, that's a real, real win for everybody. Uh, you know, I, I just, you know, I'm just ecstatic that this, this can happen. And, you know, when I talked to the senators, they said, well, why hasn't this been in place forever? I said, well, you know, I don't think it was anyone's bad intentions to not include the, the veterans. I just think people didn't just think about it because we were not at the table when the discussion was taking place. So now we're getting it done. And I'll, I think by the end of this session, we will have a new program. Now, in order to take advantage of that, you got to have the skills you know, and all those good things to be in place. And that's why it's important to get into this program. I mean, you have some great people here who can just walk you through these programs and the system. So if you're not involved with the contracting development program, you need to get on board and get ready because this is coming. It's going to be tremendous opportunity for next year and toward the end of the year. So go, let's go get this money. Uh, we're all veterans and uh, you know, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, and I have a whole bunch of other stuff going too that can assist us as veterans. So I'm just pretty excited. That's what it is. So I had a conversation with the uh, Angela, you was on that call. Uh, we had a Zoom call with the Secretary of Transportation. We talked about some of these things and uh, you know, he's on board. So, but we have to get on board to be ready. So with that, I'd just like again to say thank you all for your presentations today. And I look forward to um, being part of this, you know, this, this great program. Great. Thank you, Jean. We really appreciate that view from the policy and advocacy piece. And so we appreciate you stepping up and going to bat for the veterans today. And so let's yeah. see, uh, Rick, let's check in and see if we've got any questions that need to be answered from the group. Anybody? This is kind of our Q&A part. How are we doing on time, Carlos? Oh, we're doing good. All right. Yeah. Hey, Angela. No, uh, we've gotten a few questions, but just basically, you know, uh, are you going to be sending out the slides, the presentation, contact information? And I informed everyone that uh, we will be sending out the presentation via email and uh, everyone's contact information as well. But I didn't see any other specific questions for any of the presenters so far. Okay, so while everybody might be thinking of one final question, let me just start to conclude our program. Uh, we uh, hope that you found value in our presentations today and that you will join our contractor development and bonding program, as well as seek the resources from our guest veteran organizations. We will be following up with you to see how we can help you connect with Metro, because that was this is all about. Thank you, Keith, for joining us today and, and giving us a little input and a little insight on all the opportunities that will be coming through. Uh, we'll make sure that we get contact information from today's guest to share with you and anything else that we have. And of course, it will include all this, fa this fabulous directory of all of these veteran um, companies that are, are, that are joining us today. Again, your account manager for Metro will be Rick. He's uh, monitoring, helping us out. He's going to walk you through the front door of Metro. We're gonna get you groomed and, and get you going on this opportunity as well as others that you will have an ability to take advantage of at the Contractor Development and Bonding Program. And so uh, on behalf of Mirwood and Williams, Lakeisha, Robert, Carlos, Rick, would you guys like to conclude a sales something? Uh, yeah, I'll say thank you again, um, reiterate for joining us. Um, taking the time to really invest in your business. There's a lot of resources out there for you. So truly, truly take advantage of the resources that are there to help you um, remove these hurdles and barriers that you may see. There's a lot of people that have um, done it before you. So there's mentorship opportunities like Jane mentioned, give him a call. You can give you know our program a call. There's Ron Escobar. There's a lot of different um, companies that have um, con went to bat. So we just want to make sure that you know you have the support um, that you need to, to move forward. So thank you again. 
We know you could have uh, spent your time elsewhere. So we appreciate you uh, taking the time to join this training, this presentation. All righty. And again, that concludes our program, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much again to our guests, our speakers, our participants, our attendees, and everybody involved. We're going to gift you back in a few minutes and if you're evening, so have a great evening. And thank you again. Or did y'all want to stay in chat?